So some new data mine content for Fallout 76 has seemingly indicated to us what the vaults are actually doing there. If you explore around, you'll probably find some of these vaults. There's about three out there that basically serve no purpose. You could walk up to them, look at the door, and maybe even on some of them find out a bit about their backstory. But outside of that, it seems like there's no way to actually get inside, or is there? Well, at least as of right now, definitely nobody has found a way. But looking through some of the files for Fallout 76, what some people have found is that there may be a way in the future. So obviously with a video like this, there's going to be spoilers for the game. What I'm gonna do is actually separate them into two separate types of spoilers. First, I'll give you just kind of the features, what role vaults will serve, but not actually give you any of the backstory or lore behind them. And then in the follow-up, I'll actually give you some of the lore we have seen from these files. So right off the bat, what it actually seems like is vaults are going to act like dungeons in Fallout 76. The story method behind this, and this isn't really giving any spoilers, basically all these vaults had some kind of issue occur with them. And as such, a vault tech emergency message was sent out into the wasteland. So through the vault tech emergency management system, you'll show up to some of these vaults and be able to get inside of them and complete some kind of dungeon. You'll have to take down a bunch of enemies, maybe fix a few things, and it seems like this is actually going to have a time limit. Based on the files, here is one example of these dungeons. Diagnosis. Outside unregistered mutations have entered the vault and are threatening core fauna. Resolution protocol. Kill the contaminating creatures, attempt to save as many core fauna as possible, and gives you a time frame such as 15 minutes. So based off what I'm reading here, it's it seems like there's actually going to be several dungeon tasks. For example, another one that is listed is Diagnosis. Zookeeper and maintenance robots have malfunctioned and are attempting to purge the vault of all life. Resolution Protocol. Eliminate the malfunctioning robots. Attempt to preserve core fauna. Restart the central computing unit. And it gives you a time frame of 30 minutes. The way I'm interpreting this is you're going to go to the vault, actually enter into this dungeon, and you'll get one of these at random. There'll probably be several different scenarios you can complete and you'll get a certain reward after. One interesting component about this though is only one group can complete it at any given time. So let's say you and your squad are entered into the vault and another squad actually shows up wanting to do this quest or dungeon. They're going to have to wait until you finish to actually be able to enter in. Something else interesting here, it seems like some of the rewards you can get from these are going to be particularly valuable. One such one is a backpack that amplifies your carry weight. I always found it particularly curious when you're leaving the vault in Vault 76 that you see this backpack on the ground, yet throughout the game, nobody's found one. Well, seemingly, maybe through these vault dungeons, you can get the very valuable backpack as a reward and thus get an increase to your carry weight. There's a variety of other things that apparently you can get as rewards here, such as a compound bow, as well as some attire, maybe things that will be particularly rare or only achievable through these vault dungeons. But one other thing that has popped up yet again are these lunchboxes. So if you guys haven't seen the video I did previously on these lunchboxes, I'll have it linked in the little eye. Basically, these were found when digging through the files on the Atomic Shop. Lunchboxes being a form of loot box that actually appeared in Fallout Shelter, but it was said in the past that Fallout 76 wasn't going to have loot boxes, so this must be something else. In the files, you could see that there's certain things you could get from a lunchbox that will actually suppress your hunger and thirst, so you and your squad won't have to eat or drink anything for a while, but even beyond that, there's also something that makes it so you do additional damage to enemies and their heads blow up into confetti. Well, within this leak, we actually found a lot more about lunchboxes. Apparently, within these same files, there's actually entries for every single mutation, every magazine and bobblehead, and a variety of other things that seem to be in a similar vein to the other ones I just mentioned. So this could just be leftover files. It could have been something Bethesda was thinking about doing or planning on doing, but eventually was cut from the game but on the other side of things, let's say it actually is working how a lot of us are probably speculating right now, that you can purchase these through the Atomic Shop, but also get them as a reward from completing some of these vault dungeons. It wouldn't shock me to find this work as a loot box to work exactly or very similar to how it worked in Fallout Shelter. So obviously none of that was confirmed. If anything, we have more evidence to the contrary, but based off what we're seeing in the files right now, it seems very odd as to what kind of file listings we have if these aren't going to be loot boxes. So there's still a lot of information missing about this. How do you actually get into these vaults? How difficult will it be? I wouldn't be shocked if some of the vaults are harder or kind of higher level dungeons than some of the other ones. It also seems like Vault 94 in particular has a lot more data and information going on. Even in the game right now, if you go to Vault 94, you get way more backstory about this vault than any of the other ones in the game. So yeah, that's how dungeons or vault dungeons will seemingly work in Fallout 76. Of course, this could just end up being cut content. We saw a ton of that with Fallout 4. 
But at the same time, I think it'd be rather odd to have these very large locations in game and have them go largely unused. Although for those of us who were holding out that maybe the vaults would open and a bunch of human NPCs would enter into the world, it definitely seems like based on this, that's not going to be the case. Either way, I would take everything here with a grain of salt. It certainly seems plausible and that it could even be likely, but until we get official word from Bethesda, who knows what they'll actually do. So now moving on to the second spoiler part of this video, if you guys don't want to hear about the lore behind some of these vaults, because that's also in these files, click off now. I'm not going to go over everything, I'll have a link to this paste bin down below where you could read a lot of what what seem like terminal entries or even just notes you could find placed around. As I mentioned before, we have more information on Vault 94 than any of the other ones, and even beyond that, only really Vault 94 and Vault 96 have any substantial amount of info. It seems like most of the other ones are kind of bare bones and just placeholders, at least right now. So as far as the experiment at Vault 94, we actually had a little bit of an insight at this. If you actually go up to the vault, you'd find from the outside a few terminal entries explaining that inside the vault is a church congregation. It seemed like there were a community of people all put into the vault and had an abundance of resources. In the data mine files, we get a lot more context to this, and it's definitely not as cheeky and nice as it kind of seems from the outside. So basically, yes, one congregation was invited into the vault, and these guys were given an abundance of resources, but no weapons or defenses in any way outside of the big vault door. The vault door was set to close automatically after radiation levels hit a certain level, and to everyone in the vault, there was actually no overseer. Well, that's where the experiment began. Basically, there was a secret plant, a confederate as they're known, in the vault, and that was the overseer. He was disguised as a maintenance man, but in reality actually had control behind the vault door. The experiment going on here was this vault was meant to be a prime target. You take these peaceful church going people who thought their whole role was to just stay safe in the vault and then later actually go back outside and revitalize the plant ecosystems. That's why you see all those plants on the outside of it. But in reality, this vault was more of a target. After the vault door opened, which was meant to be done one year later by the overseer, whether or not the people agreed to it, but he was meant to urge them to hopefully go that route. Then a bunch of people that had been on the outside for that past year would come in. They would see the abundance of resources and those people coming in would have weapons. What they wanted to see was how these outsiders with violent tendencies that had seen very harsh things interacted with this very pure church congregation. Vault Tech's hypothesis was the church congregation would adopt totally new ideas and kind of change themselves to the changing world. One reality what happened was the overseer being stuck in the vault as the only one from Vault Tech, and more specifically the only one not already in this church, got closer and closer with the people there and eventually actually joined the church himself, started to believe in what they were saying. Since there was no official overseer in this vault, there was a kind of council that would make decisions collectively, and towards the one year mark a lot of the people in the council were really urging themselves to open the vault door and try and help all these people. The undercover overseer was like, that's a horrible idea, why don't we stay safe in here considering we have no real other ways to protect ourselves. So he came clean to them about being an undercover overseer and what role he was actually playing and how Vault Tech thought these guys would totally change their ideology. It doesn't seem like they like killed them or anything, but a lot of them were pretty displeased that he had been lying for all those months. But ultimately, the council rules to open the doors anyway. There's kind of a gap here. You don't really know what exactly happens, just that some people from the outside make their way in and eventually a Gek does explode, that being the Garden of Eden creation kit. There's actually a terminal in Fallout 76 right now speculating that a Gek went off at the vault entrance. So the Gek created a large explosion, seemingly killing everyone inside the vault and actually flooding the vault. So now you're called back to actually try and fix things and that's how you enter into this dungeon. So that's one of them, and that's the one we actually know more about in Fallout 76 right now. A lot of this is corroborated by terminal entries you could read yourself. But even beyond that, we also have some info on Vault 96, which otherwise is totally bare bones. We know nothing about it. So the goal of Vault 96 was actually to get nature back into equilibrium after the apocalypse. So in it, it had tons of frozen embryos, and more or less there was a bunch of auto keepers or robots that would protect these embryos, care to them, and actually release them back into the wild. These releases were meant to happen periodically and occur before some of the human vaults opened up, such as Vault 94 opening up one year later. Hypothetically, Vault 96 should had a few animal releases then, so some of the ecosystems were back in check. There was a skeleton crew of six people working inside this vault just to make sure everything went accordingly. 
I have to imagine the lore behind this one might be expanded when it's actually released, but more or less what seemingly happens is some of the animals in the vault actually began to get mutated, like there was a leak of radiation making its way in. So as they began to release these, they were much larger or grew to be much larger, and eventually the humans inside the vault lost control and there was just total animal takeover. In one of the final terminal entries, they apologized for failing and not actually recreating the ecosystem, and it seems like things ended as a result of them not really being able to get out because there was a ton of mutant creatures. As far as the dungeon component of this vault goes, apparently once you go in, you're actually going to generate syringer ammo by getting the genotypes for some of these animals. One thing that I think would be particularly cool is let's say Bethesda actually does have this as a dungeon. It comes out as a DLC in a month or two. How awesome would it be if as this dungeon does open or kind of start, there's a few new types of creatures or NPCs implemented into Fallout 76. I feel like that's a really big opportunity that I would personally love to see. But that's it. So there's a lot of information in this video. I will have a link to the source down below. It was posted anonymously on 4chan, but seemingly has been corroborated by a few other leaks out there. Either way though, it is a leak and a data mine, so I would take it with a grain of salt. What we actually get in game could be very different from this, but as they could make decisions in terms that this isn't the way they want to go. As always again though, I thank you all for watching. I should have a few more data mined videos coming in the next couple of days, so you can subscribe if you want to see those. But with that, I hope to see you guys all next time. Later.